What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I want to start with some Packers news before I get into my main topic today. And of course, that news is that the Packers did, in fact, resign Will Redmond. That was on, what, Friday, I think, at this point. But, um, you know, not really a huge needle mover here. Um, however, uh, you know, this does keep one of their core special teams players uh, available and ready to play for this next season. And I know that's not super exciting. And I think Will Redmond's ult- ultimately probably going to have to make this team um, and, and battle for a spot, you know, with guys like Vernon Scott and Henry Black and any, you know, safeties that they potentially draft or bring in even an undrafted free agency. But, um, Again, Redmond was definitely a very core special teams player for them, and I think that's going to be a player that they're still going to count on as one of the core members of that group moving forward. So definitely gives Green Bay another option there. And I do think that if you're talking about like fifth safety who has some versatility to play in the slot as well, um, I do think there is some value there. Um, he's not quite the special teamer like uh, Jarrett Bush was, but he's a better you know defensive player than like a Jarrett Bush was, right? So um, there's value there for Will Redmond. Um, again, certainly not going to move the needle one way or the other, but I could see why Green Bay would potentially want to make that move, at least to bring him in for training camp and let him compete against anyone they may bring in, either via the draft, undrafted free agency, if they sign another safety, whatever that may be. But uh, certainly a good player to have in camp and again, somebody that could be another core piece of their special teams this upcoming season. So my main topic today, I'm going to give this a shot. I know hypotheticals and what ifs sometimes go over like a fart in the wind. So please bear with me. There is a point to the end of this. And especially when you hear the crux of the what if, you might be like, what the hell is this? But my my what if today, my, my hypothetical situation, and again, there's going to be a point to this at the end, I promise you, is what if the Packers had drafted Deshaun Kaiser with their first round pick in 2017. And you might say, what what does that have to do with anything, right? They eventually got Deshaun Kaiser anyway. Um, You know, the the 2017 draft was the Kevin King draft. If if you're not familiar, I just did a whole breakdown of it uh, right here um, on the podcast a few days ago, uh, maybe a week ago, I forget what it was. But the point being here is, is what happens if Green Bay selected Deshaun Kaiser with their first round pick? So let me play this out for you just... Um, for a moment. Humor me for a moment. I appreciate it. So Deshaun Kaiser was somebody that was rumored that Green Bay really liked, specifically as they were going into day two when they traded out of their draft pick, moved to the second round. The rumor was that they liked three players, Dalvin Cook, Deshaun Kaiser, and Kevin King, and that they were deciding between those three at the top of the draft. Well, let's say they really loved Deshaun Kaiser in that draft. And instead of even moving back to potentially contemplating who they took, they selected him with their, what was it, 20, I don't know, 25th, 28th, whatever it was. I think it was 25th, 25th selection overall um, and selected Deshaun Kaiser. Now, we certainly would be hearing forever about how they passed up on TJ Watt for Deshaun Kaiser instead of uh, how they passed up on TJ Watt for Kevin King. But Let's say they aggressively took Deshaun Kaiser with the 25th pick overall. So remember that at this time, Rodgers was in need of a contract extension. He didn't sign his his current contract until the offseason of 2018. Um, Think of it at this time. Had that happened at that moment when the Packers drafted Deshaun Kaiser with pick 25, fans would have freaked the hell out. The media, certainly we would have seen something very similar to what's happening with, with Jordan Love at the moment. Um, remember that Jordan Love, or excuse me, that Aaron Rodgers got hurt in 2017. So remember that that was a, an entire issue. So now you have that kind of clouding the things as they just took a quarterback in the first round. Rodgers, uh, you know, has that contract extension looming in 2018. Hunley probably, Brett Hunley probably still gets first dibs when Rodgers goes out, but you got to think that Deshaun Kaiser would have got a cup of coffee in that Mike McCarthy Green Bay offense when Hunley really started to struggle as the remainder of that season goes on. Again, assuming everything played out the way that it was, but that that's kind of where things were at at that time. So remember, Rodgers was in need of an extension and you can only imagine how things would have blown up if Deshaun Kaiser was the pick in the first round, 25th pick overall, and again, Rodgers was in need of that extension, right? Not not that dissimilar to where we're at right now with Rodgers potentially needing to do something with his contract, right? So sort of apples to apples in that regards. So the next thing we need to look at here is how does it affect everything else? So you have to think that Green Bay still would have wanted a cornerback in that draft. Well, 
there just happens to have been a corner that was basically Kevin King light in that draft. And that was Akello Witherspoon. You look at their size, they're both 6'3". They were both 200 pounds. Um, Witherspoon ran a 4.45. King ran a 4.43. King was definitely a little bit better in the agility drills, but not by much. Um, Witherspoon was still really, really good, especially for his size. Akello Witherspoon was basically the late second round Kevin King in this draft. So I think you can make a strong argument that when they go Kaiser round one, I think Green Bay would have been very, very interested in Witherspoon round two instead of Josh Jones at that time. Remember, their safety, their starting safeties were established and uh, they they didn't, you know, Josh Jones was kind of a a luxury pick at that point at the safety position. So it wasn't a position that they needed and corner would have been a much bigger need there. So I think there's a real chance that they maybe go a a Kella Witherspoon at that spot. Maybe they go a Fabian Moreau who tested really well. they could have went in a variety of different directions, but ultimately the difference between Witherspoon and King probably would not have been that great. We know that Josh Jones ultimately didn't turn out. Maybe they don't draft a corner at all. Maybe the rest of the draft stays as is, and they just kind of keep it uh, status quo. I definitely don't think either way it affects the 2018 draft, right? Um, you know, they still go Jair Alexander and Josh Jackson with their first two picks. They still go aggressive with two corners. They probably would have even been um, wanting those corners even more had they not selected Kevin King. Um, again, it's probably the same situation had they selected Akella Witherspoon. So, um, you know, ultimately it's very possible that they could have ended up with Deshaun Kaiser and Akella Witherspoon instead of uh, Kevin King and Josh Jones. So, I don't know that there's that big of a difference here. And again, this is all going to matter in just a moment. So let's look at pro football focus. Let's say they took uh, Akella Witherspoon. Well, four years of Kevin King, 2,300, almost 2,400 snaps at a 56.1 grade for PFF. Uh, Akella Witherspoon, 2,269 snaps, almost 2,300 snaps, so about 100 less, Um, 61.5 grade, so about five points better in Witherspoon's grade over the last four years. They basically just signed an identical contract, Witherspoon uh, with Seattle. I think it was a little bit less than Kings, and then Kings, of course, with Green Bay. But these two players have basically been apples to apples. Remember, Josh Jones flamed out. Deshaun Kaiser has since flamed out as well. I don't think that there's that much of a difference here. Um... Again, the only thing Josh Jones probably would have affected in not having him was the one Cincinnati game where he balled the hell out. Maybe they lose that game instead. But outside of that, it's it's probably a, a complete wash there of not having uh, Josh Jones on the team. You also have to remember that eventually Green Bay traded Demarius Randall and some picks for Deshaun Kaiser and some picks. You have to think that Green Bay was still looking to move on from Randall at that time. They were ready to be done with him. And you have to think that they probably just would have gotten or received more draft capital from Cleveland or maybe a better player than Deshaun Kaiser ultimately ended up being with a very similar draft capital. So Green Bay potentially would have got something in return there. So my point being here is that ultimately at the end of the day, probably what would have happened in this scenario, Green Bay would have taken a quarterback 25th overall, fans go nuts. Media has a field day. There's questions abound of what happens, what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers in his career. And ultimately what happens is Green Bay probably realizes, just like they did when they eventually acquired him, that Kaiser was not the guy, that he was not the player that was going to eventually take over for Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers still gets his contract extension in 2018, the same one that he got with Green Bay. Kaiser eventually flames out of the league, and all of the talk would still be that they took Kaiser instead of TJ Watt. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the roster probably remains ultimately the same. And again, maybe they got a couple better players in that Demarius Randall trade. Um, Maybe they, you know, maybe Weatherspoon plays amazing in the NFC Championship game against Tampa Bay, and they actually end up better for it. Uh, Weatherspoon actually played really well towards the end of this season, whereas we know how Kevin King played in that game. So there's going to be fluctuations, right? The butterfly effect would certainly take its course and change things unequivocally in a million different ways. But to apples to apples, you probably draft Deshaun Kaiser, the world goes nuts, and you end up with almost the exact same timeline if you didn't draft Deshaun Kaiser. So fast forward to 2020 and you have a Jordan Love selection and he's picked what, 20, I don't even remember anymore, 24th, 25th, 26th overall, somewhere in that range, I think 26th. And you do have the connotation of Green Bay trading up to get him. But I thought Brian Gutekunst's quote 
after the draft was very, very telling. I don't have the exact quote. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. I apologize. But it was basically something to the effect of what happened with Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre happened in a large part because Aaron Rodgers proved that he was ready to take over as the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. If Rodgers didn't, they never move on from Favre in the first place. The, the onus here is on Jordan Love to prove that he's ready to take over. If he doesn't, if he can't do that, all of this talk about Rodgers moving on or playing with a different team or not finishing with Green Bay will all be much ado about nothing, period. If Jordan Love doesn't take that step, if he doesn't show that he's ready to lead the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers remains the starter of the Packers for however long he basically wants to. And my point being here again is that ultimately, and I know people are already talking about, well, they could have had Patrick Queen or they could have had Jordan Brooks or, you know, I, I should say that people are talking about they could have had Patrick Queen. Remember that the rumor going into last year's draft is the linebacker that they were enamored with was Jordan Brooks, who eventually went to Seattle. There's a strong chance that if Green Bay didn't take love and they were going to take a linebacker there, that it would have been Jordan Brooks, not Patrick Queen. And to be frank, and I, I'm going to be totally transparent. I haven't gone back and watched a ton of Patrick Queen tape, but Pro Football Focus had him rated as one of the worst players, not the worst rookie, like one of the worst players in the NFL last year, Patrick Queen. Jordan Brooks graded out okay, but could not cover at all. He had like one of the lowest coverage grades in the NFL. And ultimately, if you look at Chris Barnes and the, you know, how he played, he played basically more, he played more snaps than Jordan Brooks did at roughly the same grade. He played less than, you know, than Patrick Queen did, but had a way higher grade than what Patrick Queen had. And I think you can also make an argument here that if Green Bay drafts, let's say Jordan Brooks instead of um, Jordan Love in the first round, maybe they have that fourth round pick. So maybe they, you know, they, they don't move up or something like that. But let's just say they moved up at the same trade and, and drafted Jordan Brooks instead of um, Jordan Love. In the fifth round, instead of Kamal Martin, let's say they wanted to get their quarterback at that time and they take Jake Luton, right? Would you rather have at this point Jordan Brooks and Jake Luton or Kamal Martin and Jordan Love? The career arc right now, as we sit here today for Jordan Brooks and Kamal Martin is probably not that different. You'd take Brooks over Martin if you were probably starting a franchise today, but their skill sets are very similar. In fact, Martin may have more upside in athleticism and in coverage. So the, the, line, the difference between the linebackers there is nothing. The difference between Jordan Love and Jake Luton is exponential. Jordan Love could potentially be a long-term franchise quarterback for this team. Jake Luton almost assuredly will never be that for any team. He probably never is anything besides a, a you know C-level backup quarterback at best. So with this all being said, this all could amount to much ado about nothing. Jordan Love and his selection at pick 25 could be not, all, not that different than if Green Bay selected Deshaun Kaiser at 25 in 2017. It would have been a huge issue at the time. Everyone would have been talking about it. Everyone would have been pissed off about it. And it would have changed almost nothing. Certainly not for the worse. You can make a strong argument that things for sure wouldn't have been worse. Again, the, and even if they didn't draft Akella Witherspoon and again, just kept things the same, I, I don't think this team ultimately changes all that much from not having Kevin King the last four years. And again, with that Demarius Randall trade, maybe they get something better in return. It, it, it affected, the, the butterfly effect affected Green Bay almost nothing by picking, if they would have picked Deshaun Kaiser over Kevin King. On the flips, and, and the same thing, the same exact thing could happen. If their ultimate decision was Jordan Love or Jordan Brooks, the, the difference in ult, you know ultimately what happens with this franchise and how many games they win or lose is probably insanely, insanely minimal. It's probably almost the exact same, even if Jordan Love never plays a snap in Green Bay. And again, if Kamal Martin ends up better than uh, than Jordan Brooks, it could end up even better. You know, something like that. You know, who, who knows? And Chris Barnes, maybe they don't sign Chris Barnes in that situation. Chris Barnes could end up better. There's a situation where you can make an argument that if, again, they were set on Jordan Brooks, that even if Jordan Love completely flames out and sucks terribly, that Green Bay could still end up better because they got better linebackers in the fifth and undrafted free agency than they could have if they drafted Jordan Brooks in the first round. And all of these things are what ifs, and they're all hypotheticals. But the point being is, we just don't know. And nothing is going to change with Aaron Rodgers until Jordan Love proves that he's willing to play 
or is is a capable of playing at a high level. And if that happens, that is a win for you as a fan of the Packers, for the Green Bay Packers as a whole. If he shows that he's ready to be the guy in Green Bay, that's freaking awesome. That is a huge, huge win. Are you paying attention to the teams that are trying desperately to find quarterbacks this offseason when they don't have one? It is a nightmare. The 49ers just traded up a crap ton, uh, you know, for the third pick in the draft, you know, to try to acquire their future franchise quarterback. The Bears signed Andy Dalton. You know, who knows what's going to happen with the Texans? The, the Washington football team had to sign Ryan Fitzpatrick at this point. It is a nightmare to try to find a, a starting quarterback. Carson Wentz was terrible, terrible, terrible. And the Colts had to give up a ton to acquire him. And he was terrible. So, I understand the angst. I understand the anxiety. I understand. I'm not, and this is not me even necessarily defending the pick. I, I, I said before the draft, the, the the week leading into the draft, the worst case scenario for Green Bay going into that draft was trading up for Jordan Love. I understood if they stand pat and they selected him. And there's things that have happened since, like ultimately, do I care that they gave up a late round fourth, which is basically a fifth round pick to move up to get the guy that they believed in as a potential future franchise quarterback? I don't, but I understand why you'd be upset, but it, until we find out two, three, four years down the road of what happens here, like we can take a pause and take a deep breath and let things play out before we ultimately make this decision of Brian Gutekinds doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, or um, you know Jordan Love's going to be a bust, or the Packers are not doing all they can to win with Aaron Rodgers right now. And there's to be fair, there's a million different ways that this could still go bad. It could, but right now it has not. And Green Bay still has a very open championship window and a lottery ticket at quarterback that could pay off down the line. That's not a bad thing. That's going to do it for me today. I hope you appreciated this what if. You probably didn't because people usually don't, uh, but I appreciate you guys anyway. Make sure to check out today's audio version of the podcast. I'll be right back here tomorrow. Until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.